Welcome, I am your host Leah Love and you are tuning in to Forum 360 where we have a global outlook from a local view. Today we have our guest, our special guest, Ms. Hey. Siobhan Sudbury, and she is the founder of the Be, Fee, Be Free Project. Mm -hmm. um, she is our amazing clarity cultivator, and today she is going to talk to us about self-care and how to get unstuck. So Ms. Siobhan, thank you for coming today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for this conversation. Me too. So tell me a little bit about the Be Free Project. Yeah, so Be Free Project, um, I launched it in 2014 um, after being laid off from corporate America. Um, I wanted to do some work, do work that would be life changing and that made a difference and I wanted to impact lives and I wanted to walk in my purpose. And so when I left corporate America, I took the severance package, because I was laid off, I took the severance package, I collected unemployment, and I did a lot of self-discovery work to figure out, well, what did I want to do with my life? What makes me come alive? And then what type of work can I be doing that will make an impact? And so I launched Be Free Project um, out of a need for myself more so than anything. Um, and it, initially I started off doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and then over time is built into something much bigger. Um, so what it is, is an online and offline coaching company where I teach women how to get unstuck, how to get clear about what they want so that they can cultivate the life that they deserve. Okay. Yeah. So um, tell me, what does purpose mean to you? Oh, purpose is what you were born to do. It's, what you were when you were born i feel like everyone had a pur has a purpose for their life it's a calling something that's bigger than you that is not tied to anyone or anything else but what you are meant to do here on earth um, it took me forever to figure out my purpose and now i know without question that i'm here to be a light and empower others to be free like i know that to be true okay so when you went on this soul searching journey mm -hmm. what what did that look like it looked like a lot of prayer, <laughs> um, a lot of meditation, a lot of journaling and figuring out, okay, what was I really feeling inside? And then writing that from my heart and then listening to God kind of guide me on what I should do next. Um, and that's what my self-discovery journey started out into. And then also reading a lot of books. Um, so one of my favorite books that was life-changing for me was The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And it's all, it, this agreements are so simple. It's always do your best, be impeccable with your word, don't take things personal, and don't make assumptions. And so it sounds simple, but when you have to put those into practice every day, it's not so easy. Um, so that was what my journey started off as. And as I was journaling and praying and meditating and hearing from God, I was so clear that I was supposed to do work that I was passionate about and use my gifts. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. You mm -hmm. said you started coaching. Mm -hmm. So how does one go from being laid off into yeah. being a coach? Like, how do you make that transition, especially if you, you hadn't owned a business or no. anything like that before? Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? And that's a great question. <laughs> um, so prior to getting laid off, um, I had been coaching without a title. Okay. So my friends would come to me and I would hold them accountable. I would motivate them. If they told me they wanted to do whatever that thing was, I would check in with them, say, hey, where are you on that? And I didn't even, even know that I was coaching them, right? And so after I got laid off, I was having conversations with friends because I'm like, well, what should I do next? I could have easily went back and got another job. I have degrees and things like that. And so my one friend was like, well, you should be a life coach. And I'm like, what is a life coach? And so I Google it. And I'm like, I do this every day for free and no one has ever paid me. Uh -huh. And so when I realized that there was, this was a job that people were doing, I said, I'm gonna go after it. And so I took a six week um, boot camp entrepreneur thing or whatever on how to become an entrepreneur and I took that I believe January excuse me yeah January of 2014 and then by the end of that I was ready to launch my business and so when I put out there um, that I'm open for business and I'm now taking clients I had two people book with me within the first maybe six weeks or so mm -hmm. um, one was from New York and one was from Ohio and they both purchased programs that were $649 awesome. so that made me feel like oh Okay, yeah. there is something in this. And so, yeah, that was how I got started. Awesome, awesome. Um, so what does being free mean to you? Mm, being free means living life on your own terms, like doing what feels good to you inside and out. Um, I was stuck for a very long time in my life and 
a lot of it came from like emotional and mental issues that stemmed from my childhood. And I remember writing in my journal for so long, I just want to be free. I just want to be free. Um, and now I know without question that it's living life out loud, unapologetically and doing what feels good to me um, in an authentic way. That's what being free is. It has nothing to do with entrepreneurship, but just living life how you choose to and not allowing other people to tell you how to live. Yeah. So somebody is literally feeling like they're stuck. Mm -hmm. They're like, you know, I have been going and going and going and just nothing is moving for me. I just have no idea what to do. I have prayed, mm -hmm. I have meditated, mm -hmm. and I'm still not clear about being clear. Yeah. So what do you tell them? First of all, pause, right? And just take a moment to sit with yourself. Sometimes we're so busy being busy that we're not even listening to our intuition and what's happening inside. So number one is, yes, definitely sitting silent with yourself. Number two, asking yourself very specific questions like that I include in the Free Your Mind Journal. So, and these are the questions that I had to ask myself when I was getting started. Um, so what makes me come alive? Where do I see myself a year from today? And being very honest with myself. And then after writing that out, okay, what are the actionable steps that I need to take? If I want my life to look like this in a year, how can I work backwards and start putting in simple steps that I can take every single day in order to transform my life? I think the challenge is, especially with women that I work with, is that they're so busy being busy and we're mothers and we're wives and we have work that we do at church and all these different things that you're not even taking a moment to even look at your life, look at your life from the outside in and figure out what should that next step be. So I always say journaling, sitting silent with yourself and then asking yourself very specific questions to get clear about what you want. Okay. So you mentioned challenges. What mm -hmm. were some of the challenges that you had? and making your transition, and even now mm -hmm. that um, you were able to either overcome or that you're even still working on and dealing with, because yeah. sometimes I feel like it's really important to be as you know, clear and let people know, like, look, I struggle too. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I have made this or made it yeah. here, like, I still struggle too. So these are some of my challenges, but this is what I'm doing to overcome mm -hmm. it. That's a great question. And so one of the challenges that I face very much so in the beginning was fear because I didn't have any entrepreneur friends and I didn't feel that I was good enough and how am I going to do this right like start a business and just everything that I was use my gifts like how was I going to put that out in the world and so and I'm still dealing with that and I say this all the time um, that I do not have it all together I know how to make things look pretty online I know how to take a good picture <laughs> but as far as my life being Perfect is far from it. So I share my struggles and my challenges with my audience all the time, even with the issues from my past with my mother and just the different things that we've been through because I need you to know that I am a human being, that I'm real, that I deal with stuff too. And how I overcome those challenges is by a firm, saying affirmations and like shifting my mindset. So every time I feel like I'm not good enough, okay, there's an affirmation that I say all the time. I am more than good enough and I get better every day. And I have to say it over and over again, whether I believe it in that moment, but I still have to feed it to my spirit. And over time, as you continue to do that, you will see a shift happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, you did mention your fears and your doubts. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you continue to motivate yourself past your fears and your doubts? or even like your other clients who have their fears and their doubts. I have an amazing tribe of women around me, like like none other. Um, I have best friends that have been in my life for 24 years. We've been friend, um, best friends since high school. And then over the last couple of years, I have built these new relationships with these women um, who are also entrepreneurs and we support each other like like no other, right? And so whenever I'm in my moment or I feel discouraged, I can text my friend and say, you know what? The money I thought I was gonna make today, it didn't come through and she will quickly respond to me like, okay, and just give me encouraging words. So that's how I push through and how I stay motivated. Um, another thing is that women are following Be Free Project all over the world. And it without 
like every single week I'll get a message from someone and I'm not even exaggerating where whether they're signed up for my newsletter or they follow me online or they're a part of my be free inner circle and they'll just share like thank you so much for what you do because you've said this I am now doing this or because you so openly talk about therapy I'm now going to a therapist that is motivating to me because that tells me if I don't show up and do the purpose that I know I've been called to do then I can be holding somebody else back and I don't want that and so I guess that that is my motivation, like the people that I'm connected to, or that's connected to me. Now, with building your connections, I'm an introvert. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I am too, actually. So, you know, that can be very intimidating, uh, a very hard thing to yeah. have to put yourself out there. How do you go about building genuine, authentic relationships with people that you can call whenever, mm -hmm. you know? I think it's just the energy that I put out. I am actually, I'm an ambivert. So that's a mix of an extrovert and introvert. So I know how to turn it on and off. Um, but I am more on the introvert side. But I, because this, be Free Project is so important to me and I'm just trying to share it with the world. I get excited just talking about it. And so there's just a certain level of confidence that I have when I'm in certain rooms where, okay, it's time to show up. And I attract the right kind of people because of the energy that I'm putting out and that is what I am manifesting. So I get it because I, I have a couple of friends that are introverts, but when it's my time to shine, I don't know, it just, something comes over me, I guess. Um, but I guess the tip that I could say with that is that, you know, if you're in the right spaces and maybe not trying to be um, everywhere in all these different places, but being in specific place, places where you know you want to connect with other people and maybe your intention can be, if I just go in this room and I connect with one person today, then that's enough for me when it comes to networking. Okay. How, how did you go about networking? Were there specific places that you went to mm -hmm. or that somebody should look up to go to if they're yeah. trying to start that out? The Women's Business Center. So I'm a part of the Women's Business Center in Cleveland. And I, there's a lot of um, networking opportunities. They have like Think Tank Thursdays every Thursday. And then they have different events as well. Um, and then I just look on Eventbrite and find events that I feel like I need to be there. And when I just when I was first getting started, I went to a lot of free stuff. But now I understand in order to be in certain rooms, you have to invest money. So now I'm paying money to network in certain places because I need to be in different rooms now. Great. All right. I am your host, Leah Love. If you are just tuning in to Forum 360 today, we have Ms. Siobhan Sudbury, and she is the founder of the Be Free Project, and she is talking to us about self-care self-care and how to get gain clarity good lord can't talk say <laughs> how to gain clarity um and get unstuck so let's talk about being consistent what does that mean towards you know gaining your clarity and being more free mm -hmm. um when it comes to consistency like i feel like we're all on this journey like we're all on this path right um and when you figure out what you're supposed to be doing um you got to show up like nobody's business, right? And I get complimented all the time about how consistent I am, but it's because I know what I'm working towards. Like there's a big vision that I have. One of them is speaking at Essence Fest. I also want to open up my own space one day. And so for me, I know that I don't have time to slack off. Um, and so I make like a to-do list of all the things I need to get done for the week. Um, now I have an assistant that I'm working with that I'm able to like pass things off to her. Um, and I just know that I have to show up. I, I honestly feel like I am a self-motivated person. Um, I didn't think that before, but when my friend was telling me, even when I was working for corporate America, like I was always this driven person. And so now that has just passed over, I guess, into my business where I know that I don't have time to like not be consistent. Right. Um, and that goes with my branding. Everything that I do is going to be consistent across the board. Um, and I think that that's important to not, um, be all over the place and just keep going at it even when nobody's looking even when it feels like nobody is watching what you're doing at some point something is going to shift and so you have to keep doing it until your moment comes and that's what I'm doing now you have two beautiful little children thank you so how do you find the balance between work and being mom and you know like you said earlier they have women have a lot of titles you know so what can they do to help try to find that balance so that they don't lose themselves first of all i don't believe in balance um, okay. i do not think that there could be a perf you can't be perfect across the board doing all the things so for me in my house i work on having harmony right so 
they're my daughter's 12 and my son just turned 10 and so now they're going to have to take on like some of the things that I don't necessarily have to do so whether that's make their own dinner and something like nothing crazy right <laughs> um, and I have work to do like they understand that or if I have to come go to events or different things and they may have to come with me like there's a sacrifice there um, and then so I don't believe in balance because I think that puts too much pressure on ourselves especially when we see things on social media and it looks like everyone's lives are so perfect no it's craziness that happens all the time in my household um, but I just figure out okay what works best for me what can I do today that I will be doing it at my best and the things that are not working that is okay and I don't beat myself up about it like okay. if it's not going perfect I don't I can't yeah <laughs> I can't yeah mm -mm. um so were you afraid to step out on your own and work for yourself? Absolutely, because I didn't know what I was doing. And even now, I still feel like, what am I doing some days? Um, I felt like over time, it, my business has transitioned, and now I'm like, you know, I have definitely more clarity on the direction that I'm going in. But in the beginning, it was very fearful. Like, are people gonna buy? Are people gonna notice me? There's so many life coaches, right, doing very similar work. What was gonna make me different? Um, but what I, again, I always go back to like, I know that I am here for a reason. Like I was created to do this. Mm -hmm. And so the people that are supposed to be connected to me, they will be. And so I have to keep showing up in the most authentic way that I can and not look at what other people are doing and then try to be that because that's not what God told me. Like I am supposed to be focusing on helping women get unstuck and teaching them how to figure out what they want for their lives so that they can be free. If it doesn't fit into that, then I shouldn't be doing it. So let's talk a little bit about self-care. Mm -hmm. What does that look like to you? And what do you tell your clients about self-care? Yeah, so self-care is me listening to me and understanding what do I need in this moment. So prime example, my daughter and I, yesterday we were at Barnes & Noble. And I was like, I want a new magazine. And I had never purchased this magazine before. And it was all about self-care, ironically. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to buy this. And I'm going to close my door and I'm going to read it. <laughs> and that was my self-care. <laughs> and so that my self-care practice will look different. Some days it's reading. Some days it's taking a nap. It may Meditation, I'm really huge on that. Um, I use an app called Insight Timer. So every single morning, I meditate for a minimum of 10 minutes. Okay. And that is my self-care. And then I also have a morning ritual that I do um, I wake up at 5 in the morning and there's just a list of things that I do every day like journaling meditating reciting affirmations reading um, yoga sometimes and these things that I do each day so that I am able to give to myself first before I'm giving to my family and the people ha that have expectations from me like with be free project so that's my self-care practice. And so I teach my women um, that's in the Be Free Inner Circle or whether you come to my in-person events, is that you have to identify like what self-care looks like for you. So if that's taking a walk, if that's reading, and then putting that on your calendar. So even if all you have every day is 10 minutes to yourself, make sure that you're getting that. Absolutely. Um, describe a moment when you felt stuck. Yeah, so prior to getting laid off, um, I felt very stuck. And like I was mentioning earlier, more so emotionally and mentally, um, my mother made some very poor choices when I was younger that affected me for 17 years of my life. And I didn't even realize it until I went to therapy. Um, and that like transitioned my whole life in a whole different direction that I never thought it would be. And also in my job, I felt stuck because my children were very small and I was taking them to before care and after care, working eight or nine hours a day. I was in graduate school at the time and I felt like I had lost myself and I didn't even know who I was anymore. Yes, I was a mother. Yes, I was a wife. Yes, I went to work every day, but there was something that was missing and that was a void. And there was this constant nag of who are you? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? And I wasn't getting the answer that I wanted because I had to deal with my emotional issues first. And so how I kind of started moving forward was going to therapy. Best decision I could have ever made for myself. Um, I was in therapy for four months, and that is when my life started uh, moving upward, I would say. So can you speak a little bit? There's a stigma yes. with therapy. Yep. Um, so can you speak a little bit to that stigma and 
how to release yourself from that so you can get help. Yes, I agree. It is a stigma, and that's why I openly talk about it any time, any chance that I get. Um, because in our community, it's looked at as there's something wrong with you if you go to therapy. I was sharing with an, um, I was at an event yesterday and I was sharing with one of the ladies, I said one of the things that I, if I could do something over, I wish I would have went to therapy earlier. Um, my grandmother raised me and she did the best that she could, um, but therapy was never brought up. And I got to a point in my life where going to church and you know talking to friends, like none of that was working. And there were moments where I would have to pull my car over and I would just be crying uncontrollably. And now I know that if I would have went, you know, I'm very thankful for going to therapy. And um, I just tell everyone, like, I'm a huge advocate for it. Like, I feel like there's nothing wrong with you if you go. There's something wrong if you don't go, right? And it's good to have an objective party to be able to help you work through the mess. And a lot of this stuff, it stems from our childhood. Mm -hmm. And there's all of these people walking around smiling but broken. And that was me for a very long time. And... It got to a point when I went to, um, cause I was a part, it was group therapy. And I went to the therapist at the time and I said, hey, I'm dealing with this stuff. And she was like, okay, there's this group that's starting called Healing the Mother Wounds. At, it was at the Word Church. And she was like, um, you need to sign up. And this is when it starts. And ironically, it was like a few days. I think it was like the following week that the session was starting and it was life changing for me. Are there some, um tips to finding a therapist mm -hmm. or things that you should look for in the therapist if you're going to make that decision to go? Yeah, so number one, I would say there's this great podcast and she has a website too called Therapy for Black Girls. Um, and so if you, wherever you're at across the U.S., you can put in your zip code and you can find a therapist in your area. There's also Psychology Today um, where you can find therapists as well. Um, what I would say when it comes to finding a therapist, you definitely want to find someone you can connect with. So I ended up seeing two different therapists. The first therapist that I saw, um, she just wasn't a good fit, right? Um, but I didn't let that stop me because I wanted to be whole. I wanted to be healed. I could not keep going, having these thoughts in my mind like I need to help. And so I use an analogy that I heard from someone else that just like when you go to a shoe store and you try on a pair of shoes and that doesn't work, you don't stop wearing shoes. You just go and you find your size or you keep looking. So that's the same thing with a therapist. You keep looking until you find someone that's a good fit. And even if you had a bad experience, that was just that experience. That doesn't mean like you're that doesn't mean you're gonna have that every single time. So I suggest finding someone that you can connect with. Preferably I like a woman, um, but you know, it just depends on what you like. Uh -huh. But yeah. Okay, so if we're just gonna get a little bit more to know about you. Okay. Um, so with this question, if you knew you had one year left to live, what would you do? Mm, I would do exactly what I'm doing now. Um, but I probably would go harder, okay. <laughs> you know, okay. um, which I feel like I'm doing so much right now that I don't know how, but whatever. I mean, I would travel. If the money was freely there, I would definitely travel more and then spend more time with my children okay. if I knew I had a year left. If you could tell your 10-year-old self um, something different, something that you really wanted her to know, mm -hmm. what would you tell her? You're going to be okay. Um what you see now is not necessarily going to be your future. Um, it may be dark right now, but there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. That's what I would have told my 10 year old self for sure. Like you're going to be fine. Yep. What are your um, tips for, again, gaining your clarity, um, freeing your schedule, really putting yourself first um, that you would leave with somebody if you just could bundle it all the way up? Yeah, so one thing that I notice so often when I speak with women all the time is that we don't know what we want for our lives. We've allowed society to tell us who we should be and what we should want. Um, and so for every single woman that's watching, or man too, like, what do you want for your life? And be very, very honest with that. And no dream is too big, right? And then I would say to show up like, like, your life depended on it. Um, and don't allow like naysayers or people that are dream killers to keep you from pursuing what you know that you've been called to do. Um, and so asking yourself again, very specific questions that are in the Free Your Mind journal, and then just showing up and not being afraid to be you 
unapologetically. Um, I think for a long time I was fearful and there's still layers um, that I'm pulling back to try to be even more transparent and authentic in my life. But we are all supposed to be different. We're not supposed to be like everyone else. And when you get comfortable with that, then you'll be on fire, you know? Uh -huh. yeah. So you mentioned your journal. Tell me a little bit about your journal. Yeah, so I created the Free Your Mind Journal, um, which is, it says, change your mind, change your life. Because women would ask me, like, where do I start? You know, I hear all these great things that you're saying, and I'm watching you do all these amazing things. Like, but where do I start? And so, again, when I got started, I was asking myself questions. And I would just do a Google search, like, okay, if I wanted to change my life today, what would I do? And then I came across these questions, and I said, okay. And so I had to start asking myself those questions. So it's the same thing that I tell women to do. So some of the questions that are in the journal, like, who do I need to forgive and why? Because if you're holding on to unforgiveness, you're just keeping yourself stuck. And that person who may have hurt you, they have moved on with their life, but yet you're still sitting in it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the questions are very specific, um, like list three to five things that are keeping you stuck in your life right now. And so as you answer these questions, um, then you can take action on what you wrote. So the journal consists of 40 journal prompts um, on clarity, empowerment, action, and mindset. And then there's also coloring pages, there's different writing exercises, and there's affirmations. And it's designed to help you free your mind so, if, so that way you can start to shift the way that you think so that you can start to be free. All right. Thank you again for tuning in today with us with Siobhan on Forum 360, where we have a global outlook from a local view. You can find her book at BeFreeProject.com. Have a great week. Forum 360 is brought to you by Electrical Impulse Communications, the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, an anonymous donor, the Jewish Community Board of Akron, Medical Mutual of Ohio, Blue Green, and Forum 360 supporters.